Hello everyone. We're just beginning to get used to having live cricket around and we're still some time away from, you know, actually getting busy to covering games and watching them actually. But there's a lot to talk about when it comes to women's sport and especially women's cricket. Welcome to Cricket Panchayat where we debate over various topics related to women's cricket. Today I have a couple of former internationals who were masters of getting the cricket ball to spin. Both of them have over 100 wickets with their craft that has increasingly been under spotlight with the format getting shorter and shorter, that is off spin. A warm welcome to India's Nushin Al Khadir and Australia's player turned broadcaster, Liza Thalekar. I hope you're all safe and sound. Yep, safe and sound and bored and missing cricket. <laughs> I know. It's been five, right. six months we have off cricket completely. Right. Let's let's dive into it. What it takes to be a successful off spinner, and none better than the both of you to talk. Um, let's start with you, Nushin. It's it's often considered to be an easy craft, isn't it? Off spin because you see. Uh, the number of part-timers that exist in the sport are all made, mainly most of them are bowling off spin. So is, is it really an easy craft or it has, it has been, it seems that way because of the numbers, number of players that exist? I would uh, say uh, it's not an easy uh, craft. I'm sure that uh, how many off spinners like you consider the male cricketers apart from Muthai Murli Dharan who has achieved that feat of being the highest uh, wicket taker uh, in the men and then how many off spinners in women apart from I think Lisa my friend and Sana and uh, Shashikala who have actually done well. So it's not an easy craft. It's, it's a difficult craft because you need to bowl 10 overs and I think an off spinner does have the ability to control innings. Uh, they play a major role when you you know your medium pacers are you're getting uh, you know, it's they're easy to play. The off spinners are the ones who come. They even bowl with a new ball. Do you see a leg spinner coming and bowling with a new ball? <laughs> Nothing against the leg spinners, but uh, the offies have got this knack of controlling runs, and uh, they can come and bowl any time. Yeah, I, I agree. Certainly, that people think it's an easy art form. You look at any kind of net session that happens. And your wicket keepers and your top order batters, they think, oh, I'll just roll the arm over and they just come and dart it in. They don't turn the ball. So I, I do believe that there are different types of finger spinners. You've got your traditional type of finger spinner that's your, your normal off spin that really gets a lot of revs on the ball and wants to turn the ball sharply. Then you've got your now your mystery spinners that flick it out of all different fingers and get the ball to do some funky things. And then you've got your more, your part-timers, which really are your containing type of bowler that you'll use in a match when oh, you're just not picking up a wicket. You're going to try something else, hoping to break the concentration of the set batters. So th I think there are three different types of finger spinners or off spinners that are out there in, in the land of cricket. Each have their role. Uh, each can can pick up wickets, um, and it's all dependent on conditions, situation of the match. Um, but for me, the the biggest thing, and I don't know if Noosh found this as well, was that you needed a, a captain that was willing to back you um, to set the appropriate fields um, for you to potentially not just be an economical bowler, which was what I was when I first came into the Australian team. I was told to go less than three runs and over. That was my job. Not to pick up wickets, less than three runs and over, and I've done my job. Whereas when I probably became captain of the New South Wales side, all of a sudden I was tossing the ball up a little bit more and I was creating more opportunities to pick up wickets. So is it an easy skill? People certainly think it is. I don't think it is. Um, I think there are three different types of finger spinners that are out there and each have their place in cricket. Three different types is what you said, but um, how important is it for an off spinner to develop variation? Is it just enough being an off spinner who can turn, who has say two uh, skills in her repertoire 
one the ball that turns into an right hander the other one that stays straight is that enough or you need to have more variations in 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 your off spin i would uh, probably say that uh, see it's important to have variations and uh, like if you compare me and lisa as bowlers as off spinner she was far better off turning the ball and i was a little more of the drifter so uh, for me it was challenging to get the ball in okay and lisa was she would turn on any wicket so uh, i would say it's not about variations i would say it should be more of being consistent like you in the nets you can always try you can you know you try in the nets but how consistently are you bowling is important and that's the key of becoming successful and most importantly when can you use that delivery to which batsman you can use that delivery it's important with situation so uh, you, you know as bowlers we need to be street smart to understand that you know when you're going to use your stock ball when you're going to use the variations of course the one which goes away it will definitely help you but when do you use it it's important it's easy to practice see as international cricketers what is our job our job is to be practicing things to get new stuff to uh, you know every time you walk into a game you need to look a little different you can't be the same but how consistent are you to look different is important yeah totally agree um with what nusha is saying and and probably for us when we were playing majority of our cricket it was one day internationals t20s only came in you know halfway stage um the way that the women's format is going t20 cricket seems to be the vehicle and and the dominant format um despite so many players wanting to play more one day internationals and even test cricket but certainly you have to keep changing things up in the shortest format you can't unfortunately sometimes your consistency could be your downfall because batters can preempt what they're doing so you try you try and be ahead of the game and as nush said you must practice practice so you can be consistent in landing the ball where you want to now sometimes you know your typical off spinner you want the ball outside off uh turning back and hitting the top of off now that's not going to be the miracle ball that you're going to bowl in t20 cricket all the time it's the, probably the one that you dart in at leg stump because they're trying to to smash you over the offside so that can be just as effect, effectful so i think um variation is the key and whilst we don't have compared to leg spinners a lot of deliveries in our armory um like you said you've got your stock ball you've got your arm ball you've got your slider maybe your toppy and um i haven't seen in the women's game the doozra i i don't know if a, a women's uh hand size and strength is 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 enough to get the ball to turn the other way um so we've got to vary where we bowl on the crease and also um just our, our trajectory as well i would just like to add on to what lisa said that i as of now i don't see a lot of people like using the crease i hardly see any woman cricketer using the crease or even coming around the stumps and bowling like since she has mentioned that you know the game the format of the game has become shorter so the batsman takes a lot of time to settle but uh, at, at the same time the till the time the batsman is taking time to settle we can use coming around the stumps and bowling i don't see many of them doing it like um, probably i know i probably the concept is like you know you know this is you you need to have a straight path you can't go around the stumps uh, it shows that you you know some of the coaches uh, because i am into coaching they feel that you know coming around the stumps is like you know you're exposing yourself too early i don't think that is the thing you can always change angles apart from having variations you can as a bowler use the crease the entire crease from offside to coming around onside and you know coming around the stumps and over the stumps is your area why don't we use it so i i probably feel that you know coming around the stumps it definitely change angles have your stock ball coming around the angle changing will want do wonders to get you wickets to contain runs which i don't see a lot of people doing it interesting notion you mentioned about coming from around the wicket because as i've heard it and as i've seen it generally it is perceived that A right, a right arm off spinner coming around the wicket 
into a right-handed batter is often a negative tactic because it one takes off your uh, LBW out of question unless of course you can pitch it in line and then get it to spin which again like Lisa mentioned could be a dream delivery so is it not a negative line uh, in, in that sense? I, I feel and and maybe this is my exposure to the WBBL and watching a lot of that um, I cover a lot of those games I was starting to see like an Ash Gardner in the Australian side. She tends to bowl predominantly around the wicket. And that's seen as a containing, because you're, you're limiting being hit potentially on the offside. So you can stack your fielders on the leg side. So there are certain tactics to it. I'm certainly starting to see a lot more international players. And obviously Noosh is, is heavily involved in the domestic setup in India um, and, and representative levels just above that. Um, but here in Australia, I'm starting to see a lot of the, the off spinners within that competition using that as a tactic. Because also in T20 cricket, we can only have four fielders outside the inner circle, not five compared to, to the men's game. So you've got to be strategically smart. Um, so uh, certainly here in Australia, it is certainly not seen as a negative um, concept. You look at Nathan Lyon, he was criticised so frequently at the beginning of his test career because that's where he felt he actually in better positions to release the ball and he would come around the wicket more often than not. Um, it's taken him a long time to come um, over the wicket instead of around the wicket, should I say. So um, we've seen players adapt and change over time. I, I, I totally agree to what she said. There is... There is... Uh, uh, you know, it's going to be an endless uh, thing when we say that, you know, we're going to try this, we're not going to try it. It's Cricket is all about trying and being successful. So, um, as I said, there's nothing like being negative. I, frankly speaking, uh, when I was with the railways, I was surprised to see most of the international players, because railways is filled with international players, not actually using the angles, which it took me some time, just not uh, off spinners, even leg spinners and medium pacers, you know, to uh, make them realize and believe that, you know, this is not uh, something which is going to dent your identity as a player and people start thinking that, you know, she's not getting a line in length. That's the reason why she's coming around the stumps and bowling. Uh, it, this can be, and apparently I'm actually happy that they believed that, you know, this was a good angle to bowl. So it's just about uh, making people believe that this also exists. And as she said, uh, rightly, I have seen a lot of Aussies trying things, but uh, Indians still have that thing to accept. We need to make them believe. Right. Fair, fair enough. Uh, whenever we talk about a standard template of a one-day international, it's, it's generally pacers, seamers opening the bowling to 10, 15 overs, just softening the new ball and then the spinners com coming into the attack. But as Lisa said, towards the end of your career, in fact, in the middle phase of your career, with the advent of T20s, there was a time when spinners had to take the new ball. Uh, Lisa, you had written about this in the second issue of Women's Quick Zones magazine. So talk to us about the change in mindset you need to have as a spinner to be ready to ball at say, whatever stage of the game. Yeah, T20 cricket is all about literally one over spells. Uh, you don't get a lot of notice um, before you uh, throw in the ball. Uh, it's about making sure that you're ready to bowl. And T20 cricket is almost um, a play per delivery. Whereas one day cricket and test cricket, you let the ebbs and flow of the game happen. Whereas T20 cricket is an isolated one ball I just need to win that event. Now I move on to the next event, which is the next ball. Um, so, yeah, it was a change in mindset. For me, just from a, a physical point of view, I wasn't used to a new ball in my hand. It was slippery. Um, uh, you know, do I, do I toss the ball up? I've only got two fielders out. Where do I put my two fielders? It was literally a suck it and see. So I tried different things, got whacked. Okay, that doesn't work. Try again. Um, and obviously we do a lot of centre wickets. Back then we did a lot of centre wicket practice. So you got to see what batters' mindset were against you. Um, mm. And from a tactical point of view, I wasn't tossing the ball up. I was darting it in, not giving it any flight. And literally my job was to get out of that over 
with minimal damage. That's it. Um, and if I did that, it was an absolute tick. So it, it does take some time. Obviously, <laughs> this current generation of male and female cricketers are used to T20 cricket. They're brought up with it. They know how to play it probably more so before one day cricket and obviously the longer format. So um, they'll be a lot better off than certainly what Noosh and I were when we kind of phased into the T20 format. So Noosh, you also uh, were around when there was one day international was sort of the main format. So how, so what was first of all your preference as to the, the condition of the ball when you came into the attack and then how how did you have to modify your understanding in order to coach the girls or boys in the setup who are now coming into the scene? See, uh, like like I said, uh, Lisa and me have been two different bowlers uh, all the more because she was a person I would have seen that she used to purchase wickets. And my job for India was to contain. And I was always got, you know, bought in, in the attack uh, maybe in the eighth over, or sometimes. Let me just uh, tell you when I made when I played my first international game against England, I opened bowling with Julan because it was a run curtail game, and we were playing in Hyderabad, and it was a 24 over game. So uh, when the coach walked up to me and he asked me that you know will you open, and it was an opportunity for me, I said yes. So. Uh, and it's the way I have practiced. Like I remember my practice days, I, uh, Mr. Irfan said, would have a bucket of balls, uh, 100 balls, uh, worn out ones. Let me tell you, they were open ones. They were like, <laughs> you know, there's no seam and things. And I used to bowl with that. And there was, uh, and he used to make me do that regularly. Um, I didn't know the reason. But once when I asked him, he just told me that, you know, I don't want you to uh, look at your captain or, you know, anyone else saying that, you know, this is, I, I can't bowl. You have to bowl with all kinds of balls. It's because of the grip. See, this is again practice. And I'm talking a bit big, way back in 2000. Okay. So, uh, I, I don't know how many coaches would advise people to bowl like this. Everybody now, I feel they want, uh, you know, this ball, I need a new ball to bowl. I have never practiced with a new ball, but I've practiced with worn out balls so that my grip would get better. So, and that actually helped me. And I see, like, as the bowler for India, I have always been introduced in the sixth over or the eighth over. So, for me, bowling with a new ball was never a problem. Uh, and I wasn't the person who would toss the ball up. I would, I was much quicker so i don't think it was difficult for me yes uh, i haven't played much of t20 games uh, but i would love to you know i would have if i would have probably made a debut later on i would have played a lot of t20 games because it was the kind of cricket just coming and bowling four overs i i when i played a lot of domestic for t20 i used to open bowling for indian railways so it wasn't a tough uh, job for me to do it of course um, wouldn't get so much of wickets like Lisa got. Uh, but I would probably, I would assure you that I would guarantee that, you know, I wouldn't leak out runs. I would be very economic. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, thank you. Nushin, thank you for your time. It was fun chatting often. Thank you. No worries. Anytime. <laughs>